Uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, so today we have the episode five and six of the Nature Lens uh, that we've been running. Um, I'm sure it is going to be uh, two very exciting and uh, informative presentations. Uh, the first one will be on birds of our paradise by Lanka Vijay Singh. Uh, so Lanka will present uh, birds she has captured in many parts of Sri Lanka. Um, I have traveled with Lanka a couple of times and I've seen what an enthusiastic uh, photographer she is. Uh, very keen to learn, very keen to capture uh, the good images, very keen to look at the different angles that uh, the pictures need to be cap cap captured. The important thing is, you see, uh, what I've seen in Lanka is that she's very keen to improve and I, and I know uh, she's put a lot of effort to this presentation uh, and let let. Uh, uh, hope you all enjoy the presentation. Uh, so as I said, Lanka is an enthusiastic wildlife and travel photographer. She travels extensively, uh, not only in Sri Lanka, uh, even overseas. Uh, so she has the privilege of uh, having time to travel overseas. Um, she uh, takes part, part in competitions uh, and has won awards. Uh, some of it, if, if I am to mention, uh, was uh, at the 64th uh, PSSL International Exhibition. She won a PSA Honorable Mention and IUP Honorable Mention. Uh, at the Gradac Grand MSM Circuit 2019, Chairman's Honorable Mention. And in the Singapore Super Circuit 2019, two Honorable Mentions. So on top of her being a keen photographer, she also uh, takes part in competitions and she has been successful. Uh, the second presentation will be uh, by Pandula Bandara. Um, he is one of Sri Lanka's most ac ac accomplished photographers, if not uh, the most accomplished. Uh, the awards he has won, I cannot mention because it's so many. Uh, th thousands of gold medals, thousands of silver medals, uh, so many uh, best author in many of the competitions. Um, uh, so his success has been immense. But uh, if I am to mention uh, his most uh, prestigious achievement is the Grand Master PSA, uh, which is a very high distinction in the hierarchy of the PSA. He is also involved uh, very much in uh, the PSA, the Photographic Society of America International Activities. Uh, he is the PSA Regional Exhibition Standard Director for South Asia, PSA Star Rating Director for Travel, and he also serves as a member of the PSA Travel Results Review Committee. So he's very much involved in the present PSA setup and the PSA competitions. Uh, his presentation will be uh, about a day, uh, is, is titled A Day in Yala. Uh, he is presenting uh, the photographs he, was, he, he has taken uh, in, while, uh, while he spent a day in, in Yala. Uh, it, 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 is a, it, it has a wide range of uh, photographs from uh, little birds to uh, captured in, with, with beautiful environment to the leopard, um, to the viharaka. Uh, so it, it, it gives a complete, not only the big animals that we see in Yala, but he's also captured the small animals and he also shows how those small animals can be captured beautifully with the environment. And uh, being in, being being involved uh, in the in the competitive field in the in the international competition uh, in the competitive field, he will also touch on um, uh, a little bit on competitions and how um, what the judges look at in judging a wildlife photograph. So I'm I'm sure that presentation or it will be very informative. And for those who who wish. Uh, to participate in exhibitions, it will be very, very useful to get some good tips as to uh, what, the wild, what the judges look at in, in uh, judging a wildlife photograph. Uh, so with that, I will uh, uh, get Lanka to start the presentation. One, uh, once both the presentations are over, we, they, both of them will take the questions and answers. Uh, so if you may have any questions, uh, be ready to ask them. Uh, let's finish both the presentations and then take the questions. Uh, over to you, Lanka. Okay. Thank you so much, Hiranti, for inviting me to this presentation. Actually, this is the first one. So um, I will straight away start sharing the screen and then I'll start with it. Okay. Uh,
Okay, so today my topic is birds of our paradise. So I'll be talking about the pictures of birds that I have taken around Sri Lanka. And um, actually mostly in Singharaja, Yala, Diyasuru Park, then Diyata. And also like I like to say that Sri Lanka is uh, known as one of the best biodiversity hotspots in the world. And we have around 500 species of birds, including the migrants out of which 33 are endemic birds. So my uh, Singharaji presentation, I will start with the endemic birds. First, I will show you a few endemic birds that I have captured in Singharaja. This is the jungle fowl. That's also a national bird. And as you can see, the uh, on my uh, left-hand side, that's the male bird, which is very colorful. And then on the right hand side is the, yeah, it's a female bird. And these captured in Singharaj. This was also captured in Singharaj, another endemic bird. That's the crimson back, flame back. Uh, we captured this Hello. early morning. Yeah, tell me, I'm in a yeah. Zoom meeting. Anything important? I'm in a Zoom meeting. Uh, this is a pair of uh, Serendip's cop sows. We were very fortunate to capture this because uh, they, are, they are one of the latest additions to the endemic list. They were discovered by Deepal Varakagoda in 2004 after more than 100 years. And also, normally you don't see these birds outside. So we had to go really inside and capture them from a distance. And I used my 200 into 500 zoom lens to capture them because we didn't really want to go near and disturb them. So uh, that's why there's a bit of disturbance in the there. Mm. And there, yeah. And this is the Sri Lankan minor, another endemic bird that I have captured in Singharaja. This is a pair of hanging parrots. They're also endemic, and we were very lucky to capture this in Singharaja because normally they are in the canopy and they do not like descend down. But uh, this was actually early morning that we captured this pair of uh, hanging parrots. This is uh, the blue magpie. Yeah, this is a blue magpie, which is a common bird in Singharaja. And most people who go to Singharaja, they love to um, capture this bird, another endemic bird. This is the Ceylon crested drongo. Uh, why I put this picture is because I love the environment it's in because this, as you can see, this bird really um, blends with the environment. And uh, another endemic bird here. Now, this is actually one of my favorite pictures. This is a Ceylon frog mouth. Uh, this bird is endemic to Sri Lanka and South India. And we were actually able to go quite close to this bird and capture this picture. Mm, and they were not really uh, disturbed when we went quite close. But of course, we were not disturbing them. We managed to cap capture this picture. This is a male and female. This is a purple rump sunbird, also captured in Singharaja. And this picture now, now I have actually uh, come to my Yala pictures. This is a crested hawk eagle, as you can see. I wanted to capture the environment that it's in. And if you uh, look very closely, you can see a small bird. That's a, a wide-browed fantail that's perched on this bird. We were uh, really watching this bird for a while. Fan tail, it's called a mob attack because the tail was trying to chase away this hawk eagle. And if you, as you can see, the hawk eagle is not exactly um, quite disturbed by it. So I have a few shots of this, but I particularly like this one because the fan tail can be seen perched on it. 
this picture I put because I um, to show you how well these birds blend with the environment. And this this uh, this is a gray-headed fish owl, sorry, gray-headed fish eagle. Uh, and uh, it, this environment kind of gives a kind of a 3D effect when you take the whole thing. This is again a crested hawk eagle mm, with its prey. Now this is a Bayer weaver bird, also captured in Yala. Now this bird, there's something really interesting about this bird is their nest. The nest is quite fascinating, as you can see. Most of you all would have seen the nest. And an interesting fact about this bird is the male bird weaves the nest uh, to attract the female. And if the female doesn't like the nest, uh, the female doesn't mate with the male, so the male has to make another nest. So I, I found it quite fascinating. Uh, I mean, I, we were told uh, about this. Mm, and um, yeah, that's another fact about this weaver bird. This is a Malabar Pied Hornbill. Uh, the Malabar Pied Hornbill also, there's a little interesting story that I will tell you. Because uh, when they're nesting, the uh, fem they normally nest in a tree cavity. So the male bird would seal the female in the nest cavity and the female would lay the eggs and have the chicks. And while it's inside, the male would be feeding uh, the female bird. And also, like once the chicks are a little bit bigger, the female would uh, fly out and they would seal the chicks inside again. And then both parents will be feeding the chicks. So I think that is for, uh, to uh, protect from the predators and all that. Mm. And another thing is they have one partner for the whole uh, life. Yeah. Uh, this picture I thought of including of the same bird, the Malabar Pied Hornbill, because of the environment. So as you can see, you can see the Patanangala rock in the background and the bird is kind of centered. So it's one of my favorite shots. This is an Indian roller. Why I took it in this environment is this one. Actually, I captured this while we were staying at Yala treetops. And this bird came quite close. So I just wanted to uh, show you that how uh, they come quite close to the bungalow. Now I'm going to show you a few pictures of the bee eater. The bee eater is actually a very common bird that you will see in Yala. And there are actually four types, the green bee eater, the blue tail bee eater, the chestnut bee eater, and the um, European bee eater. So I have managed to capture just two of them, the green bee eater and the blue tail. So this particular picture, uh, why I find it interesting is it, uh, it has a frame, kind of the branches forming a frame around it. So, so the, the other bee eaters I have captured in different environments. This is another green uh, bee eater in a different environment. And here I have the blue tail bee eater on the left hand side and the green bee eater on the right hand side. The blue tail bee eater is actually holding a bee, which is also, this was captured in Talangama Lake and the right-hand side was captured in Yala. This is another bee eater, uh, the frontal view. I, I added this just to show you the, a different view, a different angle of the bird. And actually, I think out of all of the bee eater pictures, I like this best because as you can see, it has a beautiful environment. And this is a blue tail bee eater. Now I would come to the Indian peafowl. Uh, it's a beautiful bird, as you can see, and it spreads his wings and does this dance to attract the peahen. And as you can see in this picture, you can see a peahen uh, behind the peafowl. And this is a close up of all the beautiful feathers. And I thought of adding this picture because normally people are interested in capturing the pea, uh, pea fowl from the front because of the beautiful feathers. This is from behind how it looks. So I thought it looked 
pretty interesting from behind also. So that's why I added this picture. This is a gray heron, also in, captured in Yala in this environment. This is a black winged stilt captured in Yala. This is a Euro, uh, European, no, Eurasian, Eurasian spoon bills, a couple. And as you can see, their beak is a special, I mean, it looks um, different. This is a painted stalk. Painted stalks are a very common sight, but I thought I'll include one just to show them in the environment. And also another picture of the painted stalk in flight, because this, I find it's different and interesting. This is the lesser adjutant. So lesser adjutant is actually the largest bird found in Sri Lanka. It's not the tallest bird, but it's the largest bird found because the tallest bird is the black neck stalk. So these black neck stalks are about 10, about 10 in Sri Lanka, distributed in Anavilundava, Yala, and Kumana. So this black neck stalk I captured in Yala. Now I just want to show you a few pictures of egrets. Egrets are also very common birds, but I just want to show you like capturing egrets in different environments. So this one is a little egret. And as you can see, uh, their feet turn flesh color during breeding season. And it can be seen clearly in this picture. This was in um, Deusru Park. And this is a couple of egrets. I, uh, we, uh, captured this on our way to Yala in a paddy field. Mm, I thought this was interesting because it's like as if they're having a conversation here. Uh, this egret, what I find uh, interesting about this picture is the, its backlit and the lighting condition. This was captured in Talangama Lake when we went on a PSSL excursion. This is also a little egret um, perched on top of branch. It's a different way of capturing it. Now I want to show you a few pictures of the kingfishers. There are actually about six types of kingfishers in Sri Lanka. This is the white-throated kingfisher captured in Deasuru Park. And this is the common kingfisher, also captured in the Asuru Park. But even though it's called the common kingfisher, uh, this uh, kingfisher is not commonly seen. So I was actually lucky to capture this one. And this is the pied kingfisher, lesser pied kingfisher. I, this picture was captured in Yala. But this is the spotted dove. Why I included this is to show you uh, different angles of taking pictures. This picture was taken at ground level. I put this mat and then uh, put the bean bag and kept the camera on the bean bag and took it at ground level. That's why the eye can be seen very clearly and it's actually a different angle of taking the picture. This is a southern kokal, but uh, this picture why I find interesting is the eye. If you can see the color of the eye, that's quite, it's a common bird, but it's uh, the color of the eye is really interesting. Mm. Yeah, and this is, now I want to um, show you a few birds in the bit habitat. Yeah, yeah, a few. Yeah. Uh, a few birds in the wet habitats and um, in the wetlands where you can find, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, close to the city. This is a spot built pelican. And this picture, if you can see, uh, what is interesting about this picture is the symmetry. As you can see, like, uh, you can see the reflection and the symmetry of this. That's why I included this. I want to show you a small video clip of this. Uh, spot wheel pelican uh, catching a fish. Just a small action of this particular bird. Yeah. 
this is a red bottle lapwing. Of course, red, red bottle lapwings are very common birds, but um, you can photograph them in interesting ways. So this is actually in Deosuru Park. Uh, the interesting fact about this is the reflection. As you can see, it's forming a very uh, interesting shape. And the same one I have pictured in a different angle for you to see, like uh, just to show like the different ways you can capture these common birds. Like, this is a pair of lesser whistling ducks captured in Thalangama Lake. And this is a white breasted water hen. That's also a common bird. So um, just wanted to put this in the natural environment. And this is a common moorhen, also in its natural environment in Thalangama Lake. The pond heron is also a, a bird that you can find in the wet habitats. And uh, the interesting thing about this bird is when it flies, it takes a different color, it's white. This is a purple swamp hen. Uh, the purple swamp hen also you can see commonly, but uh, this particular picture I took because actually you don't see them much perched on these shrubs. So because their feet are not exactly uh, designed to perch on a shrub. So, but then I thought I will include this one uh, because it was in this position. And now I come to the final picture. Yeah. I will stop sharing the screen. Thank you, Lanka. Uh, so, uh, question for Lanka we take uh, after Pandula's presentation is over. Uh, Pandula, you can take over. Hi, guys. Good evening, everyone. First of all, thank you, Hiranti, for inviting me to this presentation. Previously, we had a brilliant presentation by Lanka. Now, uh, actually, you guys must be wondering what Pandula Bandara is doing in this uh, wildlife group, because I have been labeled as an art photographer. That is true, because um, I'm involving much with art photography due to this uh, competition international. But actually speaking, my uh, most uh, preferred areas are travel photography and uh, wildlife photography. So uh, before I go uh, more into the uh, presentation, let me tell you uh, what I do normally in wildlife photography. So uh, normally I plan uh, one day trips. I don't go for uh, two, three days because I'm a bit of a busy person with my business and everything. So I plan one day trips and uh, I started, I, I start my journey around 12 o'clock midnight and I reach whatever the destination I want to go, whether it's Yala or uh, Vipattu. I can reach by 3.30, 4 o'clock. Then by 6 o'clock, I start the uh, safari. And in the evening, again, back in Colombo uh, around midnight. So that is my normal way of doing uh, wildlife photography. And also, I want to tell you, I like... Uh, whether I go for a wildlife shoot, or a uh, art photography shoot or a travel photography shoot, I have a plan. That doesn't mean that uh, the, the the animals will come and pose in front of my uh, camera, right? It's not that case. Normally, I plan for at least from one one particular uh, tour, at least twenty five photographs, which I can take it to accept in uh, international competition. So that is my normal plan. So let's get on with my uh, presentation. And uh, my uh, topic is today, a day in Yala. Actually, this was happened two months ago. Um, uh, the same, same way I told you earlier also, I started the journey around 12 o'clock. I reached there, Yala, uh, about 3.30. And that day, uh, I met one person, Ashan Fernando, who was also there. So I invite him to go with me. Right, so he accepted and he also came with me. And we start the journey around six o'clock and we didn't have to go longer. And we, we found straight away this guy. Uh, 
And also, I want to tell you one thing. I don't care much about who the animal is. As long as the animal is gives me a good pose and a good background and a clean, clean shot, that's it, right? So I don't care whether it's a leopard or a mongoose or wild buffalo, whatever it is, I don't care. So, and also, I don't know much names of these uh, animals. But luckily, that day, Ashan was there. He said, this is strawberry. Uh, they said uh, strawberry because uh, this animal's face is like a strawberry. And we met this guy around 6 uh, show till about 9, 9.30. He came along the road and he came up to this Borolu, Borolu web or something. I'm not much familiar with the names of these places as well, right? And he, he, he came to drink water and he was there uh, nearly about... Uh, 45 minutes uh, drinking water and uh, again he went up to this place and he was there in about another one hour and after that he vanished. So uh, we continued our, our, our journey and uh, I spotted this guy and uh, again I want to tell you I don't know much about these birds as well but uh, uh, before this presentation I consult one of my uh, colleagues Asha Ashen Marasinga, he gave me all these details and whatever I'm telling, it's all credit goes to uh, Ashen Marasinga. So this, the, this guy is Brahming uh, Starling, again, migrant bird and um, breeding resident, right? So the, those things not uh, interested me actually, right? So my interest is getting a right frame, right? Now look at this frame. The, the creamy background, right? The foreground is 100% clear. And the details of the birds is very important. Not only the bird, even the even if you are taking an animal, the details are very important. Because if you are going for international competitions, judges are definitely look at. The first thing they look at is uh, the details. So in this bird, you can see all the colors are there, the orange color, and the blue color, yellow color, and the ash color, everything with the background, it's, I think it's a perfect frame for a competition. Now, this one is uh, called um, the Helihinia in Sinhalese, but it's a common bird, right? Again, uh, um, migrant bird, you can see all uh, songs in, the, in Sri Lanka. In my case, I, I look at the frame, right? background it's it's a really creamy and bokeh green with mix it uh, yellow color right and look at the front front uh, front side of the uh, picture it's all uh, like um, i don't know what this grass is but it's really beautiful so uh, that's why i took this uh, picture right this is called uh, red vented uh, bulbul and uh, this is i think very very common bird but uh, when i see this bird i saw this uh, some kind of uh, art uh, frame under this uh, picture now look at the background it's 100 percent white color and this is a black bird and even even the tree it's fully clean right no no greenery but i saw this to be eaters blood and it's kind of a triangle there so that's why i took this picture okay uh this one actually uh lanka gave a very very uh brief description about this uh, particular bird so i don't i don't want to tell much about this guy and uh, look at the background again and this was very close and uh, I, I i could capture with the real details and look at the eyes and everything it's 100 percent focused and also the background it's uh, really creamy and uh, with a uh, very nice bouquet uh, on it. Okay, uh, this is called um, chestnut-headed bee eater. Again, this is a very common bird, but uh, look at the colors of this bird and also the uh, clearness and the, uh, the details of this bird. That's, that's what matters now. Um, even Hiranti told me to sp uh, speak about uh, the competition. Now, now, if you look at the judges, what they look at it is the the first thing what they look at it is uh, the details of the picture. So you have everything here, and also the bouquet gives a uh, brilliant um, uh, 
kind of a uh, shit. Okay, uh, this one is um, blue tail beat again. Now look at the background. It's, it's again uh, uh, very very uh, greenery uh, kind of thing with the merge with uh, yellow color, right? I want to tell you one thing now. Uh, if you apply these uh, these kind of common birds in Asian region, definitely they won't accept these kind of thing because. Uh, these birds are very common in South Asian region. But if you go to uh, what you call the Europe, European side and also uh, into uh, uh, Western side, this is not common, right? They look at it uh, very seriously, these stuff. First, first of all, they look at it, the details. Then they go for the environment thing, right? They, they, they always like a uh, very calm and quiet environment. And also, they don't like uh, much about action shots. Even this one, spotted dove, right? I know most of the people, they don't even look at this bird, right? Because this one is that much common, right? As I said earlier also, but if you go to European side, right? This is a very good picture. Look at the background. It's all brown color. Even the tree is brown, right? No greenery on that one. On top of that, you will see this. Nice bird. Okay, let me take uh, one example for this uh, European type uh, photographs. And this is not my photograph, right? I got the per permission from the author to show this one. This is uh, this photographs won one uh, GPU gold medal in my international competition. That is uh, Hiranti, and also she won the. Uh, the best author award as well among uh, 300 authors, if I'm not mistaken, 72 countries. Now look at this bird, right? We had for this uh, final judging, we had three judges, two from uh, Europe and one is from Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is uh, Asela Karnaranda. He's a veteran, high-end, top-end uh, wildlife photographer. And uh, the other two ladies are from uh, Europe. Uh, there was a uh, very nice argument, right? Uh, the, straight away, the, the two ladies from Europe, they said they want this one as a PSC gold medal. But straight away, Aselaya rejected that one because he said this is a straightforward shot, right? And it's a common word. That is true, right? Because that is in this coca everywhere, right? There is nothing uh, much to tell about that one. But when it comes to European side, they look at it uh, in a different angle. They had a very nice argument. So Anna was talking about the backlight, right? The Ria was talking about the background, right? It's 100% blurred. Even the foreground is slightly blurred, right? And Aselaya he was talking about some other thing. He, he, he wants to uh, come up with a very nice, uh, what he called macro shot, right? So what, as a salon chairman, I came uh, in between them and I told, actually speaking, uh, Asela was telling that was a, uh, that, that picture was a very nice one and it's, that was very difficult to capture actually. Uh, it's, a, it's a macro shot with uh, very good details. So I told him to take that one as a PSA goal and I told two ladies to give some other goal to this one. So that's why I said, Europeans are looking at a different angle. The Asians are looking at a different angle. So you have to understand that. You have to speak to the judge's heart, right? Because nowadays, if you look at it, uh, all these uh, uh, competitions, you can find out who the judges are. So go to their web uh, websites if, if they have go to their Facebook, go to their Instagram. So you can find out what they like and what, what they don't like, right? Talk to them, talk to their heart, then you can earn some medals. Okay, so uh, we continue our journey and we, uh, I, we saw this elephant far away from this uh, rock. Actually, this is called, I think, uh, Ali Gala, right? Uh, Actually, I, we, we waited there need about 45 minutes. I want to take this shot uh, with the background of this rock. So we waited there for 45 minutes to this guy to come this particular. 
it's a bit of a common chart, the uh, elephant family. I saw this one and just took it. Again, uh, if you apply this kind of charts to the South Asian region, you won't get anything. But um, in Europe side, yes. Right. This one, uh, uh, at the same place, we, we saw this uh, wild buffalo is playing uh, with mud and suddenly he came uh, right in front of our vehicle. So I, I took this shot just, just for a portrait kind of thing. And uh, look at the details again, just because of the closeness, I could uh, focus everything uh, in this person. Again, the same place uh, in a wild buffalo, he was also playing with the mud and suddenly he crossed the road. I could capture only this particular image, right? Only I have only this one and I like these details and also the background. Background is, uh, it's almost green and uh, orange color, but uh, this guy has come out very nicely with the black color uh, detail. Again, uh, when I saw this one, actually we almost passed this thing and I stopped the vehicle. I told the uh, driver to stop that and reverse it up to this uh, particular window. And I took this shot. While I'm taking this shot, these two guys uh, straight away looking at me. After I took this shot, uh, I saw these all uh, leading lines and everything and uh, kind of uh, they're living in this environment. And nowadays, uh, most of the judges, they look at it in an angle of uh, animals are living in their environment. So that's why I took this shot. At, at this time, I didn't have a wide angle uh, lens, but I took this with my 400 2.81. And look at the seas also from the background and everything is perfect, uh, I guess, for a environmental shot. Okay, that was the, uh, the morning session. Then we came, uh, we stopped uh, for lunch. We have a two hour break uh, in Yala for lunch. So normally we go to that uh, seaside place. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, so soon after lunch, I just had a uh, right round and I saw this dumb beetle is uh, rolling this thing. And again, I didn't have a macro lens there. Perfect, perfectly, I should uh, capture with the macro lens. But uh, what to do? I had only 400, 2.8. So I had to go fully uh, ground level and I took this shot. But, uh, and also very interesting uh, fact uh, of this person. Now he, he can roll up to uh, 60 times uh, than his body weight. He's very strong. And also uh, this guy is very common just before the rainy season. Even this, this shot is from the same place. So after that, I went to the seaside and I saw this small uh, bird, this is called Kentish plover. And uh, again, it's a migrant bird. Most of the coastal areas, you can see this bird, it's, it's a bit of a common scene. But for me, actually, I saw these uh, sea waves coming and hitting uh, this bird's leg. So I, I thought of taking some shots with the white colored uh, background. Again, I had to went uh, fully down and that's why the, the front part is uh, blurred. Okay, uh, I couldn't find the English name for this one. Uh, we call it Kakuta. And uh, again, um, we had to take with the macro lens, but they are very speedy. Right, so yeah, it's very difficult to capture. Again, I had to go down and take it from the 400. But look at the background. Background is like uh, really snow, right? It's the uh, sea waves plus the sky. It's all kind of merged, right? That's what um, the 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 perfect point of this photograph. Again, uh, the same bird with a different kind of uh, action, and uh, the same bird. Now look at the sun is. Also, same like the previous one, uh, the sky and the waves all merge. It's kind of like a one particular area. It's huge. And in front, you can see the Kakuta. And in, in, in back, you can see the other, other, um, other guy of this uh, bird. Okay, soon after lunch, I saw this silhouette. And um, this is common hoop. Eh? Right, and uh, I saw some kind of uh, art frame, and that's why I took this uh, particular chart. This was the main sighting uh, we found uh, soon after lunch, but unfortunately, this guy doesn't 
turn up rightly he just crossed the road and we took only one, two shots and this is the best one i can show you all out of those two shots okay as as i said earlier also i don't care uh, much about the bird, much about the animals who are photographing so as long as they can give me a very good pose definitely i capture even a monkey so i saw this guy is playing with uh, uh, i think maybe their brothers and uh, suddenly he came into uh, this branch and gave me a direct pose to the camera so i took this one but uh, and also look at the background it's very very nice bouquet is there okay you all must be uh, laughing for this rabbit this is a very common sight uh, if you go to yala or bilpattu but for me it's not common but if i go with uh, this kind of photos to the south asian region as i said earlier so no way you can get acceptance but uh, in um, europe and other 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 western countries you might have a chance you might have a chance okay this is also that common hoopay and uh, normally he lives in the, lives on the ground right that's why i took this shot with the green with the brown color and the head is also brown and with those uh, black and white uh, the body okay uh, these are common mongoose i think i have a pretty good chance with the mongo mongoose because i have won some uh, medals uh, from europe side uh, this guy came very close to uh, the vehicle and um, that's why i took this uh, portrait because there is a separate uh, category in high end high end uh, competitions uh, you can apply uh, as a animal portrait so the all the details are there the eye is 100% focused and even the uh, the details in the face is uh, very good for a uh, animal portrait so now i have come to the uh, final part of my presentation now this is the final guy we met around 5 o'clock in the evening this is one of the cubs from mahasila bavar right so he gave us a uh, very good uh, show about 45 minutes and um, i have the big picture also but i thought of uh, cropping very uh, very tightly to take this uh, portrait now let me tell you one thing don't get me um, mix up uh, all these thing there are two types of uh, competitions one is the high end competitions the other other competition type is the competition if you uh, take high end competitions they have a separate segment called uh, uh, animal portraits so for those kind of competitions these portraits are highly accepted but when it comes to psa and fiap competitions they don't allow these type of tight crops thing because the argument is uh, they says they can't uh, tell exactly whether this has taken on a zoo or a um, natural environment but uh, the other thing is but uh, you can uh, they, they they have a psa and fiap people they have a, a separate category it's a open category Uh, open category also they have portraits but it's normally it goes as human portrait but still you can apply with this animals but only thing only thing um, if you are going for a portrait kind of category it has to be 100% clear 100% clarity should be there look at the eyes it's perfectly focused okay let me tell you about uh, how i do my shooting as well right so normally um, these all these photos are handheld not even touched a bean bag right all these are handheld and also i am i'm i'm my mode is continuous mode right but only thing uh, when i keep my eye onto the uh, eye piece i always observe their movements and release whether it is uh, on continuous mode but i release single shots right it's 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 a must because the shake is more if you release without controlling the breath huh? without controlling the breath if you release continuous uh, the shake is more you are you are going to be ended up with blurred images right so uh, controlling uh, breath is a different technique uh, i can't tell you right now but 
if I get any chance to go with you all, I can teach you all then and there, but not in a, this kind of a presentation. Okay, this is a Sephia tone one, but again, um, FIAP and PSA type competitions, they don't allow toning at the moment. You can do it uh, complete uh, black and white one, but not uh, toning. But uh, when it comes to high-end competitions, they allow uh, the toning as well. Okay, this guy gave us a bit of a show there and look at all these uh, the portraits. I think uh, I have the big picture as well. This is the uh, best picture I uh, took from this guy. This is actually um, upside down, right? Um, okay. Look at all these, uh, all these portraits are 100% clear and uh, eye focus is uh, perfect, right? So soon after that, uh, he just want to cross the road and uh, uh, unfortunately, there are a lot of vehicles, right? He was trying to cross the road, but uh, no place to cross. And finally, uh, he managed to uh, find a small gap to cross the road and he crossed like this and after that he vanished. So uh, that's it from my end. And thank you very much for listening to my presentation. And if you have any, uh, any questions, I guess you may ask now. <laughs>